Hello, this is Randy Wooden, and this is from the Wooden Desk. I invite you to pull up a chair today, or wherever you may be, and just take a few moments to listen in and hopefully share a concept or a skill set that will help not only bring greater effectiveness into your life, but uh, just be a help to you in ministry. Today, I'm going to talk to you about leadership etiquette in a meeting. Uh, this is something we probably don't talk a lot about, but Every one of us have been a part of meetings that uh, have been just really what I call replenishing and exciting. And usually it's because the facilitator or the person who is chairing the meeting is usually very prepared or has prepared things that are going to have interaction in it. And at the same time, I and you yourself have been in a meeting where uh, it's boring or you know, it was very difficult to get through because the facilitator was not prepared and did not know how to do a meeting with excellence, or there was just a lot of people and a lot of confusion, a lot of words being talked during the meeting that seemed like really at the end of it, you thought this was a waste of my time, or, you know, it was just very frustrating, or even sometimes going away and people uh, being misunderstood. So I think it's very important we have to set what I call leadership etiquette in a meeting setting so that people know what to expect, not only coming into a meeting and how they should respond. You know, uh, as I begin to talk about this, uh, I had many a times entered into a retreat setting with, you know, um, 10 individuals or 20 individuals that you're going to be spending a couple days. Usually I would set out at the beginning of any of those times talking a little bit about leadership etiquette. You may just want to word it as guidelines of how we're going to operate during this retreat setting, whatever you choose to call it. But usually when we talk about leadership etiquette, we're talking about how you act as a leader sets the cultural norm for others. Ultimately, they will do what you do. So if you're organized, and I learned a long time ago when uh, you're going to have a meeting, you bring excellence to the table. You bring your promptness and being there on time as a leader, but also whether it's an agenda that it's well written and laid out for what you're going to do in that meeting, as well as if you're doing uh, meetings with uh, executive or administrative, many a times giving them uh, the uh, folders and binders so that notes are kept so that we have able to look back at history as well as have running data and all that you are trying to communicate and trying to accomplish. Well, when we begin to talk about leadership etiquette, exercising the practice of leadership maturity and discipline is important. There are what we call the acceptable and unacceptable group behaviors. What do I mean? For each, <coughs> excuse me, for each item, as we're going to talk through for the next few moments, and this is just a one, uh, just one video. I'm not going to be doing a series. This is just uh, one video on this leader leadership etiquette. For each item th that uh, we're going to talk through, you ultimately you can choose to act in a certain fashion. However, the question should be: Should you? I mean, as a leader, ask yourself: Can I or should I? So. I think we start every meeting with coming prepared, you know, coming prayerful, coming with a positive attitude. That, that, those may sound very silly uh, and simple, but yet they are so important. But ultimately, we start with this thought in mind is thought in mind does not equate boarding it out or sharing it with your neighbor. I don't know about you, but I've had individuals, whatever they're thinking, they're talking it out rather than writing it down or thinking it through. And sometimes people board out stuff and you're like, you're churning and you're seeing somebody say something, but nobody's hearing them because someone else is speaking. Another etiquette in meetings is a phone ring or text does not mean immediate answer. The attention is the item at hand. It's not what's going on. You know, I think that's very important because I've seen people get a text and they've got their head down for the next five minutes. And I can pretty much guarantee you they heard nothing that was going on. And I know as a facilitator, I feel very disrespected or likewise, if I'm sitting there doing such as with the phone, I, I feel that the person who is leading the meeting is going to feel disrespected because he's prepared his time and our time to be together 
and here I am somewhere else in somebody else's world. Not only that, if the speaker is talking, that means I'm not free uh, for all nor the time to make points and discuss, you know, the, you know, what's on your agenda. I think it's very important that if, if, if our leader is talking, we stop, we take time to listen until he pauses and he asks questions and we have opportunity to share. Not only that, but I believe we have to recognize our organizational role or position. See, the leader is not looking for input or your view, I believe, on every issue. All the time, all the time, and yet the thing is, is we have to know and sense the atmosphere and remember the situation in the meeting is not about you. If you didn't call the meeting and you're not the leader, more than likely you're a team player. And the difficulty sometimes is we can make the team better or we can make it worse by the way we cooperate within leadership etiquette inside the framework of what we call meetings. Not only that, but I think it's important for us to, to uh, never dominate conversations. We kind of talked about not blurting and saying or talking continually, but rather sit down, listen, without providing your input on every conversation. And that's kind of what we said, but I'm reiterating that again. And yet, if not, practice that discipline. Not only that, maintain eye contact. I think it's important that you're paying attention. And there's no greater way to pay attention in communicating one-on-one -on -one or one to a small group is by eye contacting and, and, and nodding or engaging with body posture. I think that's very important in communication. Another part of leadership etiquette is honor the time frames. What does that mean? There's a time to start, there's a time to end. Yet starting meetings at a given time do not allow those that are late to interrupt or be brought up to speed in the topics that have been discussed. If you're the one who is late, do not interrupt. Come in quickly and take responsibility to obtain the information after the meeting. Occasionally, tardiness is unavoidable. Come, you know, you know, continual tardiness is a problem. I know where we had lived was uh, traffic was really an issue. Bridges uh, that opened up to allow waterway and ships through many a times. Uh, became something that was not able to be controlled. And at many a times before a meeting, I'd get a text said, I left plenty of time, but I am stuck in traffic. And I understood those things. But I think sometimes, and then I've had individuals, it didn't matter what time you started, they're going to be 10 to 20 minutes late. And that's also unexpected. And I think sometimes we have to call individuals in like that and say, hey, we need to talk about this because this is an issue and this is a problem. Not only that, but I think another leadership etiquette is do not interrupt. One person speaks at a time. I think this is very important in any meeting. I think that when you got four or five people trying to talk, and, and I've been in meetings where people just get excited and start talking, and I, I think it's very, very, we have to be very careful, and it kind of takes me to my next one, no sidebar conversations. Well, I've said that more than one time. Say, hey, guys, you're over here having your own conversation. We don't know what you're saying. The whole group may need to be hearing. And at the same time, this other person is is uh, is talking. You know, of course, I, I go back to the old elementary education. If you have something you'd like to say, just raise your hand, you know, or, you know, make gesture. And, of course, if someone's talking or two people start talking, I may say, hey, well, let them finish and then then we'll let you talk. So I think it's very important. Part of that's keeping order also is leadership etiquette as the facilitator, not allowing things to get out of control as well as it being balanced. In small group settings, I think it's very important. There's always going to be individuals who like to talk more than others. Some you have to pull it out of, and then some you're going to have to tone it down and encourage them and say, hey, let's give others an opportunity uh, to speak because this is your 11th time. <laughs> But yet I realize, not only that, but do not derail the agenda. Derailing occurs by bringing up off-topic, um, you know, items, new ideals, or items that have not yet been discussed with, uh, a, you know, with the appropriate people in the room or prior to a discussion in a public forum. Boy, how many times 
have we been a part of a meeting where something like that is brought up? It catches somebody else up at guard. One of the things that was one of the rules that I used for my administrative uh, team and council, I said that anything that's put on the agenda needs to be put on to the agenda prior to the meeting. Nothing is added to the agenda once we have opened up. And I think that's very important because we need time to process. I even said usually etiquette would be 24 hours before a meeting. That way the leader has an opportunity to think through it, to pray through it, know how he's going to introduce it and facilitate it as well as those who might be a part of that discussion. I think that's important. Not only that, but just simply put, follow the agenda. And as you're following the agenda, I think things flow smoothly. Do not complain publicly. You are responsible for the atmosphere around you. Everyone knows what it is to have, as we call the proverbial pink elephant in the room. Everybody knows there's one and can see it. Maybe that person who's the elephant doesn't see it, but nevertheless, it makes everybody uncomfortable. And I think it's very important that we be very careful uh, to conduct ourselves in a way that we are a part of the team. Not only that, but do not bring other activities into the meeting. And then last of all, I believe when it comes to electronics, electronics in a meeting are usually inappropriate unless they're used for note taking. And if they are, they need to be they need to be communicated as such. Phones should be off and texting should be off during the meeting, unless there is exception at times where something's going on and you're expecting a call and you have information, then this needs to be announced to the leader ahead of time that I'm expecting a call or a text because of this and explain so that, you know, that, that the phones are not going off and things like this. All of these are exceptions to the rule, but if it happens continually, again, it's a problem. Now, what I know is etiquette is so important, and I just really believe that as we are doing meetings, whether it be business meetings, whether it be staff meetings, whether it just be meetings for planning, that having ourselves prepared in a place and being excellent at what we do is going to create an atmosphere of meetings that uh, are going to be healthy and productive. There's probably nothing I struggled with more than anything was having a meeting that this wasn't productive. And it frustrated me as a facilitator. And I'm sure, it, you know, at times, you know, frustrated those who were part of the team. So I encourage you think through the process, put everything down in bullet points, let there be a flow to it, let it be prayerful. And I really believe God is going to help you. But I, at the end of this, I, I would just encourage you as you're communicating with your team, as you're thinking about uh, trying to communicate etiquette around your team, that you come up with a list of things that are important to your leadership team and your core so that there can be productivity, that there can be really a difference made in every meeting that you have. That is my prayer for you. And I pray today that the kingdom of God be enlarged in you and around you. May God bless you today as you continue to be the leader and to be the person God has ordained you to be. God bless.